cut off from the surrounding world by enormous trackless wastes and frozen seas, leaves a small band of Eskimos calling themselves Netsilik, the people of the seal. There is scarcely any country on earth that presents conditions more severe to men than that part of the Canadian Arctic lying north of Hudson Bay, above the Arctic Circle, for it lies waste and bare of all that is considered necessary to life. Winters are hard and stormy, beginning in September and lasting right into the middle of June. The cold is severe and constantly varies between 30 and 50 degrees below zero. By using the materials that nature has provided, the Netsilik Eskimos have successfully adapted to this harsh environment. This delicate balance between society and nature has been brought to an end by recent contacts with civilization. This is a record of their very last migration as I observed it while living amongst them at their winter camp. <laughs> The family sleeps together between caribou skins on a platform of snow. <coughs> the first task of the mother waking up is to spread out the flame which has been burning all night. The people of the winter camp are related by ties of blood and marriage. They are like one large family. Each morning, if weather permits, the men ready themselves for the seal hunt. Dogs pull the sleds and help track the seal. They are essential to the survival of the Eskimo.
With bone from a caribou antler, King Nook pounds seal blubber into oil. The tiny flames provide the only artificial heat and light in the igloo. <laughs> Winter is the most social of the seasons. With igloos side by side, a neighborly visit might easily be made at any time of the day. <laughs> While the men ride their wooden sleds over the sea ice to the hunting place, the wife is softening the dry skin boots. The dog's keen sense of smell will guide the hunters to the breeding holes of the seals that swim beneath the ice. Although the temperature on the snow platform is below freezing, Eskimo children often play without clothing. <laughs> Bang, <laughs> <laughs> The dog of Itigmangnark sniffs a seal. The hunter uses his harpoon to find the breathing hole.
He explores the shape of the breeding hole, so he will know in which direction to thrust his harpoon. He covers the hole with snow so that the seal will not notice any change in the surface. Dogs are kept away from the hunting site because they might make noise and frighten the seal. Itimangnyark uses his saliva to freeze a tiny thread of down to the two arms of a piece of hard sinew. His seal indicator is ready to be placed at the edge of the hole. The vibration of the loop from the seal's heavy breathing will give the signal for the harpooner to strike. He uses sealskin thongs to fasten the detachable harpoon point to the shaft. Now begins a watch that may last many hours at temperatures of 30 or 40 degrees below zero. The mother shows her 12-year-old daughter how to use an old boot as a blueprint for the cutting of a new sole. A seal keeps many breathing holes open throughout the winter. As no one knows where the seal will come, it is necessary for the hunters to man closely located breathing holes.
This group effort increases their chances for a catch. In this cold desert, the seal is the only source of food for the Eskimos. This catch will ensure the survival of the community for several days.
Eskimo infants are nursed until they are almost three years old. The first years of their lives are spent in close physical contact with the mother. The hunters gather for a ritual sharing of the liver. <laughs> The search for subsistence must go on. No man is allowed to sit idle. The hunt has been successful and the people gorge themselves with meat. Mm. 
play with their children, and children grow up with a strong sense of belonging. Mothers and grandmothers always put their children to sleep with stories. And from stories, they get all their knowledge of how things have been, for children never forget what they hear. With food plentiful, the people build a large ceremonial igloo where much playing and merrymaking will take place. Each family cuts through the wall of their igloo and joins the others under one roof. A 
slab of ice is used as a window pane. Timangniark uses the bow drill to carve a new soapstone pot. With the adds, Itimangnyark sharpens the teeth of his saw. Even a small boy of less than three is allowed to use his mother's sharp knife. No matter how severe the weather, Children spend most of their time playing outside. <laughs> King Nook has something in her eye. Hello, Lago. Ah. 
The people believe that the seal is thirsty. Its soul is appeased by a drink of fresh water. It is the custom for the wife of the hunter to carve the seal and distribute the meat and blubber. Little boys are the first to get a bite. Girls are given a drink of fresh blood. The seal is shared among the hunting partners according to definite rules. Each family is entitled to a particular part of the seal and to that part alone.
Each man puts up a prize before joining the spindle game. <laughs> the winner has first choice. <laughs> is played by pulling mouths.
Shortly after this record was made, cargo planes brought vast quantities of building materials for the construction of warm houses. The Netsilik Eskimos were established in a permanent settlement and their migratory way of life was brought to an end. Oh. Uh -huh. 